Imagine Putin endorsing a candidate who claims to stand with Ukraine. That's the level of irony we're about to unravel in this Orange County scandal. Hello, welcome to our new episode. I'm your host, Sidra, and he is David. <laughs> Hi, David. So, hey, Sidra, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Alive today? and kicking. Oh, good. Good. That's great. Okay, guys, we have a very exciting news that is about the, it's not excited, by the way, but yeah, it's a good <laughs> news uh, about the Orange County. And uh, that is about the real estates. So our topic for today's episode is real estate, smoke and mirrors. So the story of this is realtors in Orange County are playing both sides, funding ads that contradict their true agenda. We explore how special interest twist campaign messages to sway local elections. With nearly half the county commission at stake, it's a fight for control of suburban sprawl future. So David, I have a few questions for you for this um, episode about the realtors uh, in Orange County. So my first question is related to the um, what does this campaign strategy reveal about the power dynamics between industry groups and local government policies? Well, um, the dynamics are quite powerful, especially, mm. uh, especially not especially, especially when you have um, lobbyist organizations um, like the Orlando Regional Realtor Association's lobby. And the Realtors Association's lobby um, is very uh, concerned about its ability to advocate for its uh, realtors and for the business that um, housing uh, realty uh, has in Orange County. And so you have uh, the Realtors Association lobby um, campaigning on very hard for uh, particular candidates uh, here in Orange County to uh, be elected to the Orange County Commission. Um, their interests are sometimes in line with uh, local government uh, in this particular situation, Orlando City or and or Orange County government. And uh, they want to, you know, pretty much put their money where their mouth is and they yeah. are supporting uh, candidates like uh, Steve Leary uh, for Orange County Commissioner District 5 uh, and also uh, candidate author, uh, author Austin in the Orange County Commissioner District 1 race. Okay, so can you please put more, um, more um, light on this issue? Sure. Um, right now, one of the persistent issues in Orange County is urban sprawl, in particular, uh, establishing a rural boundary in Orange County, meaning that at a certain point in Orange County, certain areas are deemed um, rural boundary areas. Uh, and I'll try to put this in as simple simple terms as possible. What it's saying is that Orange County is designating certain areas in the county where the ability to develop um, communities must meet a higher standard 
by the Orange County Commissioner Commission to move forward with specific uh, development projects. So this is in an effort to slow urban sprawl in areas that are typically left to uh, conservative co conservation and preservation uh, efforts. So again, the rural boundary is pretty much to slow urban sprawl and keep open spaces open. Okay. So I have more questions on this issue. I sure. hope uh, those questions will not be like uh, complex, complex questions, but no no let's problem. see. Uh, I know you are ready for the complex questions always. <laughs> I know. Always. Yes. <laughs> you are. You are. Uh, you are like a pro legion on this issue. So yes. yeah, I know. Bring it. Okay. So my question is that um, why might the Realtors Association support candidates like Steve Larry, who have not fully committed to the rural boundary plan? Well, the. Realtors lobby and other lobbies um, mm -hmm. would support a candidate like Steve Leary because uh, candidates like Steve Leary and author Austin mm -hmm. have stated publicly that they are willing to consider conversations about opening up open spaces or say developing open spaces in a manner that is inconsistent with the plans that Orange County has for future growth and also the city of Orlando, their plans for future growth. They are willing to at least have a conversation, keep the door open to negotiate, to yeah. maybe meet compromise. And so their advantage in regards to placing themselves in a position where they're open to protecting the rural boundary, but not to the point where it stymies or suppresses the growth, the economy of Central Florida. Okay. So uh, I like the point, the, the compromise one and open the door. Uh, I like that. Uh, but I have a question that is for, you can say it's a, basically a newbies in the politics. So sure. is it like, um, is it an old issue in the Orange County or is it a new issue or what, what do you think about this? It's, it's an old issue and there's nuances. Uh, let me start first with the opposition uh, to um, candidates like Steve Leary and uh, Arthur Austin, um, those who are in support of a rule boundary and the conditions that allow the Orange County Commission to rule or, or to decide on future development. Um, we're talking about uh, in District 5, uh, Kelly Simrod, uh, who is a uh, UCF uh, professor in hospitality in, uh, in the hospitality field, and, and then who's facing Steve Leary, the former uh, mayor of Winter Park. And then you have uh, uh, attorney uh, and the incumbent commissioner in District 1, Nicole Wilson, who is facing off against um, uh, Arthur Austin. They are firm believers in keeping the rural boundary safe very firm believers and are not willing to negotiate their position or compromise their position. They are strict in their convictions. So that's the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. The history, as I see it, Orlando needs to expand. And recently, unanimously, the Orlando City Council approved the annexation of the Deseret Ranch development. Deseret, Deseret Ranch uh, or the Deseret development is a large swath of land in the rural parts of Osceola County, Orange County, and parts of Seminole County, but mostly in Orange County is where we're focusing now. 
um, it's owned by um, companies uh, that are associated with the Mormon church. Uh, so there's a lot of money uh, behind uh, Deseret development. Uh, the city of Orlando uh, agreed to annex approximately 52,000 acres in mm. East Orange and bring it into the city. And this flies in the face of the whole rural boundary issue. And so you, you, you see Democratic um, Mayor Buddy Dyer and uh, the, the Democratic controlled city council, uh, because I believe uh, Tony Ortiz is the only recognized Republican, maybe um, uh, uh, Robert Gray or uh um, Commissioner Gray, uh, so two Republicans, uh, and then the four other are Democrats, uh, but it's democratically controlled uh, city council um, going against, you know, democratic liberal causes like protecting um, the rural lifestyle, the, the rural boundary. Uh, but Orlando City needs money. They need new development, new developer fees, to pay on the debt that they have and also on projects, infrastructure projects, they, they need funded in order to prevent our sewer systems in Orlando yeah. falling apart, our yeah. water systems falling apart, our streets falling apart. So yeah. development is a means of funding current and future projects to keep the city, to keep the county running. Exactly. And when a penny tax for infrastructure or half a penny or whatever it was fails, mm. that means that money to pay for these future infrastructure projects need to be found somewhere. And okay. that's in developer fees. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a, I think, reasonable answer. But uh, let's uh, go to the our main um, question of this topic. So that is the that's basically what are the political and ethical implications of uh, lobbyists promoting candidates in Orange County uh, with misleading campaign ads, particularly in the context of the realtors opposition to the rural boundary what do you think on this question well politics being politics and <laughs> i live in district yes. five i live in district five where uh the rural boundary issue is uh is prominent in both campaigns of uh, kelly simrad and steve leary and i've received uh both of their literature uh, mm -hmm. because I live in their district and I collect yeah, this Yeah, definitely. And it's very clear that, you know, Kelly Simrad is an environmental activist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we know where she stands. If, however, the argument with Steve Leary is that, you know, he's he's vague about, you know, his position. And oh, when really? You have, oh, oh, definitely. Oh, my he, God. Oh, my when, God. It, 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 for our listeners and viewers, uh, Steve Leary ran for county commissioner 40 years ago and he dropped out because of some personal issues that's okay. on him Makes however sense. it's very clear that with steve leary um uh, those he have uh associated with on his campaign are, are are tied to the developer and the hospitality and lodging uh lobbies here in orange county um it, again Everyone, you do your own damn research and find yeah. out for yourself. Don't don't take our word for it, but look into these individuals yourself. There's plenty of information on the internet. And as Winter Park uh, Mayor, uh, Steve Leary has a, a history. Um, and to win a race, you, you, you need to be able to communicate that you are in the best interest of your, your constituents. And so Steve Leary has not... Uh, based on the literature, based on uh, media accounts, uh, based on his own, you know, um, website, uh, has not come out against or for, or for the rural boundary per se. Um, he, in one piece of literature from the uh, Realtors Association lobby, he says he'll protect our rural boundary. Okay. 
yeah, that's that is vague. You know, um, yeah. you can protect something, but uh, you can protect the rural boundary, but at the same time, uh, agree to expand development on uh, in the rural boundary. So yeah. you know, it says it's one of its top priorities. It's the the, the proof that's in the details, okay. and um, this is where voters need to engage candidates further in more detail. What do you mean by protect that rural boundary? What are the details? And unfortunately, in the primary in August 20th of this year, um, the decisions to um, place a person on the county commission are usually set in the primaries instead of the general election. Um, Kelly Simrai got 41% of the vote. Uh, she was close to getting 50%. The strategy didn't work out that way. Um, however, it, it looks good for her in, in November. Uh, Steve uh, Leary's campaign came in second. I can't recall how many, um, what percentage, I think uh, maybe in the 20s. Um, he's got a lot of work to uh, cut out for him. Mm. Um, and and But the disappointing thing, uh, part about this was the fact that 17% of the people who were eligible to vote uh, in this particular contest uh, actually voted. And that's really disappointing. And that doesn't bode well for November. I doubt it will be 17%, but I'm not, I, but, but I don't know. I'm hoping for, for much better, but yeah. with the, with it, it's, it, it's not necessarily deceptive. The mailers, However, this information is provided to residents. And ultimately, it rests upon voters to do their research, to take the time and fully be civically engaged in their responsibilities to vote. And that means research. And, and these candidates are available. Um, there's a way to reach out to um, Leary's campaign online. There's ways to reach out to Simrise campaign online. And it's just everyone has, has a mobile device. Everyone has a I phone. Will interrupt you. I will interrupt you here. Yes. So you are saying that contact with them. So I don't think so. It's a very easy task to contact with them online. Where's but, my phone? Oh. Yes, it, it is. It's whether or not they respond, Cedra. Yes, they respond. Because I, I got these folks' phone numbers and email addresses in my phone right now. And there are folks, I could tell you between the two, who will pick up the phone first. Okay. Let's try the uh, the experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to put... Yeah. You okay. put me. <laughs> we will do it. We will do it later. Maybe some other episodes. And yes. we will show to our audience. We'll just random and we'll do it live. Just random out of the blue. Yes. And here's what we'll do. We'll call. No, no. Don't tell the name of the person. Ah, right good point. No, good point. Okay. This is a big secret because okay. uh, we don't want to expose the name of the person right now. Because if we will expose, then I know they will receive David's call, definitely. So and right you know now, something? no. The call cannot come from me because I know all four okay. candidates. <laughs> so we got to figure out, we got to get like a random phone number that we can okay, call I from. will. I will use my phone. I will call. Yes, yes. yes because yes. nobody has my number. So that's a good, great idea. Good point. We will, we'll do that. We will, but we will do it in the next episode. I okay. Like okay. I have a last question for you, and that's yes, um, uh, what do you think, and what do you see? That uh, how do you see the future long-term effects of uh, allowing lobbyists to manipulate local elections for their own interest? Well, you know, it's always going to exist. As long as there is money in campaigns, it's always going to ex exist. And unfortunately, what I see in this election cycle, um, the interests that do not have the funding to run an effective campaign will lose, period. 
Now, granted, those who have money doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win, especially with gobs and gobs of money. I've defeated candidates who outspent my candidate uh, 10 to 1, and, and we defeated them. So it's not how much money you have. It's the quality of campaign strategy that you have to make the most of what money you have or do not have. Um, as far as the lobbyists here, um, the goal is, as I remember a conversation I overheard during a candidate interview, after a candidate interview with lobbyists, um, the goal is to pave over all of Central Florida from Davenport up to Sanford. And we may just be delaying the inevitable. Um, it's, it's hard. It's tough. Yep. And um, we're seeing in other parts of Florida. And um, it's, it's, it's going to happen, unfortunately. It, it's just um, the timing. I think that's all for today uh, on this uh, topic, but um, be ready for our unexpected calls. I like that. Our future episodes, just stay in touch with us uh, through our social media channels. And finally, like, share, subscribe, and comment on our post. And also you can contact with through the email if you need, if you are really interested in uh, participating in JN Washington Network. So yeah, thank you so much, Taylor, for this episode. It was a nice topic. Uh, we will uh, do debate on other uh, topics um, soon. Thank Sounds you. great. Thank you, Cedra.